we not on our own understanding. I say that because that was our theme of Vacation Bible School this week. And for people who missed it, we really missed something. With that being said, let's stand and call ourselves for worship.
Dear Father, for this God's great effect for this morning, dear Father, I am asking, dear Father, who here has sent to lead us and guide us, dear Father. Let him find the truth, dear Father, strengthen him, bless his family, dear Father, and keep him encouraging, dear Father. Jerusalem is doing good things, dear Father. And when you leave the ship, dear Father,
Good morning, church. This is to the women of Jerusalem. Thanks, thanks Jerusalem women for the lovely basket and all of my favorite things. Thank you for the light up planner that was so pretty and many thanks for the food line and gift card. And the Dollar General card. Can, can't say thank you enough. Thank you for being so nice to me. May God bless you. Love, Carrie, Carrie. This is also to the women of the world. Thank you. Your kindness is greatly appreciated. Thank you for all the wonderful gifts. May God continue to bless you all. Laura Johnson. To the senior missionary, thank you so much. It's hard to put into words how grateful I am. I only hope you know just how much I mean when I say thank you for everything. Thelma Smithers. I apologize. Are there any visitors today? If you're online visiting with us, on behalf of Pastor Griffin and the Jerusalem Church family, we welcome you this morning. Let's keep Trustee Robert Johnson in our prayer prayers. He was hospitalized on yesterday and he's at St. Mary's. The directory ministry will meet at the morning worship service to begin the next phase of the directory, the memorial section. All members of the ministry are asked to please be in attendance. As a reminder, the next meeting for Belmont Cemetery is the fourth Sunday, June the 23rd, at the morning worship service. The Sunday School and Christian Ed would like to thank all of those who participated in this week's Vacation Bible School, with a special shout out to the men who covered dinner on Wednesday, and Bill Thomas and Novi Baker who prepared the meals on Monday and Tuesday and to the young parents of guardians who not only brought their children, but who stayed and attended. Y'all are doing a great job, and we are so proud of you. Thank you. Amen. From the church calendar, Deacon is meeting Monday, June the 10th via Zoom. This is a reminder that the men and boys of Jerusalem are going fishing on June the 15th at James River Pier. Admission is ten dollars for adults and seniors. Children six to twelve, eight dollars. Donations are being accepted. They will be leaving the church at six thirty. There will be a sign of sheet in the vestibule. Let's continue to pray for our sick and shut in and each other. This concludes my announcements for this morning. church. We're about to start. Or not, just wait. Say thank you for bringing us to this very moment once again. Thank you, 
Lord God, we ask you to forgive us for all our sins and the that we know all the sins we commit and we don't know. And we ask you to move as far as the east is from the west. And Lord, right, Lord God, right now, it's a special opportunity that we have just to give a small token of our appreciation of the many things you've done for us in the past, the things you're doing for us now, and the things you see fit to do for us in the future. May it all be used for the uplifting and the rise of your holy kingdom, Lord. And Lord, I ask you to bless those who have to give and bless those who have not to give. And these things I ask for, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
that are giving can come up front. Amen. Please stand. Jackson Jr. and 
Natasha Celeste, and the granddaughter of Michael Jackson Sr. and Benita Jackson. She graduated from College La Petite Academy and will be attending Glen Allen Elementary School in the fall. She has received awards for tap dance, soccer, and reading excellence. In her leisure time, Kennedy enjoys swimming and riding her bike. Her favorite food is olives and tomatoes. In the future, Kennedy aspires to be a dentist. Congratulations, Kennedy. Jordan Mallory Jr. Jordan Mallory Jr., affectionately called Baby Joe, is the son of Jordan Mallory. Jordan will be attending Liberty Middle School as a sixth grader. Jordan enjoys playing football, basketball, and baseball, and he plans to try out for all three at Liberty. In his free time, he loves being outside, riding his bike, and playing video games. His favorite food is chicken and rice. In the summer, Jordan will attend workouts in camp. Congratulations, Jordan. <laughs> Kaylin Smith. Kaylin is the daughter of Tyron and Jennifer Smith. She has completed eighth grade at Oak Hill Middle School and will attend Hanover High School in the fall. In her leisure time, Kaylin loves to shop and hang out with friends. She also loves riding horses and she has attended several camps related to horses. Her favorite food is Chick-fil-A and she's currently undecided about her future. Congratulations, Kaylin. <laughs> Zion Green Thomas. Zion is the son of Dietrich and Bertie Edwards. He has completed eighth grade at Moody Middle School and is a rising freshman at Henrico High School. In his first few months of his sixth grade year, he was selected to move into IB classes, skipping the application process. Zion was also active in school sports during his time at Moody. He played for the school's football team his seventh and eighth grade years and played on the school's basketball team his eighth grade year. He was awarded MVP for the 2023 football season. In his leisure time, Zion enjoys playing sports, hanging out with friends, being a big brother to his sisters, shopping and browsing the internet for latest fashions, creating mock designs for a clothing line on FaceTime with his friends, door dashing at his parents' expense, and sending random cash out requests to family and friends. His favorite food is an eight count nugget meal from Chick-fil-A with the cookies and cream milkshake, whipped cream, hold the cherry, and you can't forget the Chick-fil-A sauce. <laughs> Zion is currently employed by a few elders in the neighborhood, dumping their trash and recycling bins weekly, doing their yard work and other odd jobs. This summer, he plans to land his first official job. In the fall, Zion will continue his academic and athletic career as an Henrico Warrior. He has dream of, dreams of landing a Division I scholarship, but he knows that with God, all things are possible, and his dreams will someday become an answered prayer. Congratulations, Zion. Aiden Golden. Aiden is the oldest son of Gabrielle and Jordan. He is the grandson of Sylvia Readers and the great-grandson of Carolyn Mills and the late Raymond Mills Sr. Aiden will be attending Patrick Henry High School in the fall. After that, he plans to attend private school or another school for his athletic abilities. Aiden excels in football, basketball, and track. In his free time, Aiden enjoys hanging out with friends and family, going to KD, and playing video games. His favorite foods are Mexican and hibachi. Aiden plans to work part-time and attend workouts during the summer. His future plans are to play sport at the collegiate level and attempt to get the CDO. Congratulations, Aiden. <laughs> Jeffrey Turner Jr. Jeffrey is the son of Jeffrey Turner Sr. and Laverne Turner. He is a 2024 graduate of Matoaka High School. He has obtained many awards, including Academic Achievement Awards 2022, 2023, and 2024, National Honor Society Induction Award, National Art Honor Society Induction Award, Workplace Readiness Award, Y Certification, FAA Small Unmanned Aircraft Systems License, Autodesk AutoCAD Certification, Autodesk Revit Certification, Autodesk Inventor Certification, Governor Certification of Recognition for Early College Jeffrey enjoys playing Xbox 
tends to go switch and wee. He also enjoys hanging out with his friends and swimming. His favorite foods are pizza, chicken fried rice, and meatloaf. He plans to graduate from Virginia Tech with a degree and license in architecture. He also plans to pursue a career as an architect and express his creativity in the world with his designs. Congratulations, Jeff.
Congratulations again. Come on, can you just stop praising these amazing young people? Come on, if you can stand up, can you stand up and celebrate them? Come on, they work hard for these accomplishments. Listen, we just want to reiterate once more. We are extremely, extremely, extremely proud of each and every one of you guys. Uh, all of the sacrifice that it took to get where you are. All of the hard work that it took to get where you are. All of the faith. Come on, somebody. All the things that it took to get where you are. And you just were so grateful for God's hand over your life. As you can stretch your hand toward them right now, we just want to pray for you as you enter into this next phase of your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory for each and every one of these that are yours. We thank you, God, for your hand over their lives up until now. And we thank you, God, that you continue to know the plans that you have for them. Plans to prosper them. Plans to give them hope and a future in you. Uh, God, we thank you right now for favor over their lives. That they'll be blessed in the city and in the field and in their uprising and in their downsetting, God. And everything that they'll put their hands to for the sake of the kingdom, God, it shall prosper in Jesus' name. We thank you for the ability to focus. We thank you for the ability to stand up and stand out, God. We thank you for the ability to stand fast in their faith and trust in you, God. We thank you that they have leadership written all over them, that they have uh, 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 just elevation, God, written all over them. We thank you, God, that they'll be used by you every move they make, every step they take. We give you glory for your hand continually over their lives, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come on, give God praise. And I want a picture. Can somebody get a picture? Can we come in close, God?
hated Jacob. Somebody say hated him. Because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him, and Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning my father are at hand. And when my father is dead, I will slay my brother Jacob. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebecca, and she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and she said to him, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. It's Esau's plan to take your life. I'm going to pause right there. I'm going to step momentarily over to the Gospel of Luke, the sixth chapter, the 27th verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is what it says. But I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them, which hate you. Bless them that curse you, and pray for them, which despitefully use you. I'm going to pause right there. Um, hallelujah. I want to speak to you this morning uh, from a subject title. The power of produce. The power of produce. Let's pray. Spirit of living God, fall fresh on us in this place. The flower, it fades. The grass, it withers. But the word of the Lord, it stands forever. So we pray now, God, that you would stand resolute in us until crooked places are made straight. Until shattered places are mended. Until the glory of God is revealed in our lives. Have your way in this worship experience. Great God, that you are touched. Heal, set free, restore, renew, revive us again. And we will be careful to give your name all glory, honor, and praise, Holy Ghost. These people, they've come to hear from you. We need a word from you. Oh, God, we need a word from you. So we pray now that you will preach, do what you came to do, hide me behind your cross. Hallelujah. And I will be careful, we will be careful to give your name all glory, all honor, and all praise in the name of Jesus the Christ. We pray this to God, our Father, through the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you in advance. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. On the way to your seat, help me preach before I get started and tell you, neighbor, the power of produce. The power of produce. Hallelujah. If you've had the opportunity as of late to uh, do work, growing work with us uh, in Bible study, what we effectively refer to as master's class, if you had the opportunity to stand in with us, what you will have noticed that we've been working on forgiveness. Somebody say forgiveness. Uh, we've been working on forgiveness. We worked on the focus of forgiveness. And we worked on the function of forgiveness. And today I want to start this series, Mama Joyce, about the fruit of forgiveness. Somebody say the fruit of forgiveness. Uh, so we're going to work it as a series, but the title for today is The Power of Produce. And we step onto uh, the scene in this particular story in Scripture. Uh, the Bible is talking about two brothers, two brothers, uh, two brothers who, who, who were different, two brothers uh, who both sought the approval of their parents, but in different ways, two brothers who had their own obstacles to overcome and their own uh, uh, heels to travail in life, two brothers who didn't always see eye to eye. Sometimes they would, anybody in the, know what I'm talking about? The, you don't always see eye to eye with the folks you're supposed to love the most, two brothers, and they didn't always see eye to eye about the things that they experienced in their life, but the reason always see eye to eye is because one brother was always trying to work hard to get it done and it seemed like the other brother was always trying to get over to get it done. Uh, let the church say, don't look straight ahead, don't nobody know what I'm talking about, you can't vote. Uh, Y'all know everybody got somebody, okay, we go out. Everybody got somebody in their family that run up on you talking, let me hold something. Uh, let me hold something. Hey, I, I, let this one more, one more man, just let me, I know it ain't right either, but that's how they come to I promise you this time is going to be different. This time I'm going to make sure I get it back to you. Uh, this time I'm going to make sure I do what it is that I told you I was going to do with it. Everybody got somebody who looked like they 
trying to get over in life. And Jacob just frustrated Esau since Laura was the Lord because every time he looked at him, he felt like he was trying to get over. Come on, somebody. Anybody ever ran into that get over spirit? Y'all know that's a that's a whole spirit. That ain't the uh, I wish somebody all the rebuke that I, I, I saw when I said it. Some of y'all go, Lord Jesus, I don't know what you're talking about. That's a whole spirit. That get over spirit and do something to you. That get over the spirit and make you feel funny. That get over the spirit and get on your absolute last nerve. That get over the spirit and have you contemplate and put your religion on the shelf for a couple minutes just to hold. Just so you can tell them how you really feel. Lord have mercy. That get over spirit uh, seemed like Jacob had that get over spirit. And it frustrated his brother. And as if their relationship wasn't strained enough already, Jacob started to get over in such a way that it caused Esau pain. It's one thing when you're getting over it, it's just you, man. But you start, your get over spirit start fooling with me. Now we got a problem. You know. And, and it, it started working that way. First thing I want to talk to you about is the opportunist. Mm. That get over spirit. The, the opportunistic outlook. Uh, there was a time in the scripture, but, but before we got to this person to talk about Esau, Hayden, and Jacob, I want to tell you how we got here. Is that all right? Can I take just a few minutes to tell you how we got here? Right now? Oh, we got here. Uh, so, 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 I want to start the story. Esau is in the field one day and he's hunting and he was a master hunter. He was good at what he did, but it was hard work. It was, it, it was a hustle. And, and Jacob stayed at home with his mom. And she taught him how to do stuff around there. And Esau was out working in the heat of the day. And, Esau came home one day and Jacob had made this stew, you know, that was smelling up the whole house good, that kind of stew. This stew that make you walk in and your mouth start watering right away, that kind of stew. He had made this stew and before you know, when the smell catch you, before you even get in the door, uh, it caught his brother's attention. His brother came in the house, talking about, let me get some, I need some of that. And Jacob got the stew already just perfect. Uh, but I want to talk to you again about the opportunistic outlook. Esau was tired. Somebody say tired. And Jacob took advantage. Huh. And Esau felt like he was on his last leg. And Jacob took advantage. Huh. Esau was a prisoner of fatigue. And Jacob found a way to make it work for him. How many have ever made bad decisions simply because you were tired? Uh, how many ever went the wrong direction simply because you were tired? Uh, how many ever contemplated throwing in towel simply because you, it wasn't because you didn't think you could make it? It wasn't because you didn't think you could do it? It wasn't because God told you to quit on it? It was because I was sick and tired of it. Esau was tired. He was tired of carrying the weight of the world. He was tired of grinding and feeling like he didn't get anything from it. He was tired of working hard and his hard work hardly working. He was tired of being tired and uh, doing things the right way and getting the wrong results. Somebody say tired. Esau was tired and Jacob took advantage of them being tired. Uh, this is that get over spirit. Esau had been working. Esau was fatigued. Esau was tired. And Jacob found a way to take Esau's need and exploit his brother's need. Huh, somebody said tired. Uh, have, 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 just look straight ahead. I don't need you to raise your hand right here. Have you ever exploited somebody else's need and called it a blessing? Oh, have mercy. This is real. I'm having a real life conversation with you this morning. Have you ever exploited somebody else's need and called it a breakthrough? Uh, have you ever exploited somebody else's need and tried to turn it into a testimony? Uh, let me help you. Uh, when, when you exploit somebody and try to turn it into a testimony, you don't tell the whole story. That, that, that's how 
to go the way. Can you leave that part out? You leave. You came up, but you don't tell them how exactly it happened because the way you got there was by exploiting somebody else's. Uh, Jacob exploited his brother's need and he called it a blessing. Uh, and then so some people say, well, I don't know. That, that, that was kind of Esau's fault. Aaron, he was tired. He, 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 he didn't recognize the value of his birthright, and so he traded his birthright for a bowl of stew. That was his fault, uh, perhaps. But on the flip side of that, uh, there was an exploitation taking place by his brother, who saw his need and decided to maximize off of his need. The second thing I want to talk to you about my mom is where I'm going is opportunistic aggression. Uh, somebody say aggression. Uh, Esau attempted to do stuff the right way sometimes. He didn't always make bad decisions. Uh, and so this next particular time, he, uh, he was, his father was on his last leg, uh, Deacon Greg, and, and his father said, uh, listen here, boy, go out there and hunt right quick, get me. And, and, and bring back the game because you know I like it and, and, and one of my last meals I wanted to be dad and, uh, and so he told his father he said I'm going to get you what you need I'm going to get you what you asked for uh, he went and told uh, Isaac he said I'm going to get you what you need I'm going to get you what you asked for and before he could his brother stepped in while he was out there working somebody said while I was out he snuck in uh, while I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, somebody else tried to creep in and take my place. When I was grinding like I was supposed to be grinding, somebody else tried to sneak in and do what it is I was supposed to be doing. While I was uh, out there working hard trying to be what it is I felt like God called for me to be taking this part of somebody else. Oh, have mercy. And taking my place. And so, Jacob tricks his father and he receives the blessing of his brother uh, by doing what it is his father had asked his brother to do. So now we have a little background of the verse we read and Esau hated Jacob and he said to himself as soon as our father died, I'm coming to kill you. As soon as he breathed his last, I'm going to come take back from you everything you ever took from me. Huh. I want to pause here just to encourage somebody within the body of Christ who's trying to make it, who's trying to move up, who's trying to climb the ladder of success. Anybody in here trying to win? If you're trying to win, just wave at me. Come on, somebody. Trying to win. You may be an entrepreneur trying to win. You may be a business person trying to win. You may be trying to win in your relationships. You may be trying to win in your friendships, in your family structure. I want to let you know this morning uh, that you don't have to win uh, by manipulating someone else. Uh, that your victory is not
around nobody's boots, God, they call me. Uh, you can't get around nobody. God called me to be great because I'm here. I'm great because I'm here. And I know I might not look like it right now, but somebody ought to believe the eyes have not seen it. Neither has the ears heard that. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men. That faith that God has in store for me, the God I belong to Him. Hallelujah. So, uh, Jacob did all of this. Uh, says there to try to be great. And he ended up running for his life because he did it the wrong way. When you do it the wrong way, it's going to cost you something. I know you thought you got away with it. I know you thought nobody didn't see it. I know you thought, well, everybody done forgot about that. And you might be right. Uh, but be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also. And he ran for his life because he did it the wrong way. He got over to Laban. He started working for Laban. It's just sad then. He messed around and fell in love with one of Laban's daughters. Uh, he looked at it and felt some kind of way. Huh? Somebody here know what I'm talking about. He looked at it and felt some kind of way. So he told him, he said, look here, let me work for her hand in marriage. I desire to be with her and I'm going to do right by her. And he worked and he worked and he worked for Steve. And then the guy who had spent his whole life tricking other people, the guy who spent his whole life being underhanded towards other folks, he got a little taste of what it was like to deal with him. And the same thing he had been doing to other folks happened to him. Uh, I'm trying to tell you, uh, when you sow something, it's going to come back. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to be careful what you sow. You understand what I'm saying? You got to be careful what you sow. Uh, so the Bible says uh, uh, that he thought he was getting Rachel and instead he ended up getting Leah. Uh, he didn't feel about her what he felt about Rachel. I'm going to just leave it at that. He didn't feel the same way. And, and so he told Leah, he said, man, what you do that? You, you tricked me. Jordan, he said, how, how, how could you do that to me? Leah said, it's our custom for the oldest daughter to get married first. <laughs> he tried to make it, but anybody ever tried to deceive you and make it make sense? And, and anybody tried to trick you and give you a good Looking at you right in your eye, giving you a good excuse for why they were like that. And, and expect you to just accept what they say. Lord have mercy. Uh huh. Some of y'all know what I mean. Uh, Laban pulled one of those moves. He looked at him with all standing there, looked at him in the eye, and tried to make it make sense. But Jacob's feeling what he's done to his. He escaped his father's house, but he could not escape the consequences of his actions toward his brother. Running away from it doesn't mean that it won't find him. He was all the way in another house. All the way in another country, and it still found him. And so, once he felt what it was to be tricked, all of a sudden he decided maybe I shouldn't be that anymore. He began to do things the right way, he began to care for Laban's flock and. And, and move and operate the right way and God began to exalt him because he did it the right way. Come on, somebody. Can I pause here parenthetically just to let you know God is prepared to exalt you. He's just waiting for you to do it the right way. You can try to do it your way. You can try to cut corners. You can try to do this and do that. And you know it ain't his way. God said, if you trust me, 
in with it and do it my way. Trust in the Lord. Come on. With all of your heart and stop waiting to your own understanding. Stop following so and so and such and such and them over there. But oh, Reverend Lucas, and trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't believe to your own understanding. And all your ways give God space. Acknowledge Him and He shall. Different. If you believe in your love walk, come on, 
to try to make amends for the old. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost in here. There, I feel I'm talking in my head. Oh, because, let me tell you what we do as believers sometimes. I say we, I ain't stepping on my toes on all my toes. What we do as believers, if we get saved, and we say, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Which is true. It's in the book. That's what it says. Problem is, that person you did wrong to a year ago, Come on. still feel that wrong you did to a year ago. You run around here talking about old things are passed away. And that way you say you're sorry. And you want to call them with your sins sanctified, pious, righteous self. Talk about God's finality. You should too. Listen, you better say I'm sorry. Preach. You got nerve to be inviting me to a baptism and you ain't said I'm sorry yet. No one let you show up. Come on now. You ought to fix your mouth. Listen, if any man in Christ, he is a new creation. But that doesn't mean you didn't do what you did to who you did it to. And so you ought to have the spiritual wherewithal. They don't have to receive it. They don't have to receive it. But you ought to offer it. I'm sorry. I was wrong for what I did to you. I apologize. And I pray that you can forgive me. That's all. That's all. When you've done that, now you've done your part to walk in the newness that God said belongs to you. I'm almost done. So, so here it is. Uh, <clears throat> somebody say new. Yeah. Jacob makes a decision. Uh, Sister Jane, he says, I'm going to be the Bible says after he wrestles against the angel, the angel changes his name, uh, that he begins uh, to go forward to his brother. It says that he goes to him. Uh, and so what I want to present to you, uh, I want to present this to you. Uh, what we got right here? Oh, y'all can say it better than that. This summertime, this cookout season, I wish y'all could get excited in church like you at the park right now. What we got right here? Come on, church. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so, here's the thing. Uh, what we find ourselves in, uh, Throughout the process of our lives is trying to gain fruit. Trying to win. Somebody say win. win. And, and if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves trying to win by any means. Oh God. No matter what happens, I'm going to try to win. No matter what I do, I'm going to try to win. And when I win, I can eat what I got when I won. Come on, how many had the watermelon on that day? The cookout was 100 degrees, right? And, and, and all you need is a breeze and a couple pieces of this, and you all right, right? Yeah. So some of us just try to do, prestige what we can do to win. And we think that that's enough, Dr. We think that that's enough. The problem is, uh, if all I'm trying to win, what I end up with, Aaron is watermelon with no seeds. Somebody get it. Somebody get it. I end up with watermelon with no seeds. Okay. What's the problem with that? If I don't have no seeds, I can't reproduce. Uh, come on, somebody. If I don't have no seeds, I can't reproduce. Uh, so what I need, y'all don't hear me. Can y'all see the difference? What I need is to make sure that I don't I 
Oh, he's, he's all says, he's all says, he says, oh, he, he gets to Jacob. Oh, let me read this to you right quick. Uh, the Bible says, blessed are that curse you, the good to them despitefully use you. Well, Luke 6 32, if you love the person who loves you, what credit is that to you? What, 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 what is that? You love somebody who loves you, the world, the world does that. Even sinners show love to those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? This, this is what the Bible, this is Jesus asking you, what, what credit is that you do good to somebody who do good to you? What, 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 what does that matter? Listen, he says, it's when you bless those that curse you, that's when you're planting seed. He said, outside of that, all you got is fruit. But he says, when you can, when you can get yourself together enough to bless the person who was talking about you, Come on, somebody. When you can get yourself together enough to bless the person who rolled their eyes and giving you all that attitude, when you can get yourself together enough to pray for the person who stabbed you in the back, when you can get yourself together enough to be a blessing. Show me how the eye is seen. Can you prove it? I was studying this, and God got on my case. He said, boy, you better tell me. And they've been using them a little bit. Out of place. Out of place in that. He said, they've been using out of place. That's what he said, you better tell them. Uh, thinking this, buddy, I was reading it. I was reading it. It's talking about forgiveness. Since one is talking about forgiveness. It's talking about not judging. Deacon has and this is the verse that it says. It says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. And then this is where it happens. Are y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yeah. If you're ready, say I'm ready. Right. This, is, this is where it happens in it. Give. And it's shocking to give to you. Wait a minute. Time out. What? And good measure. Press down. Shake it. And he moves on. 
then he forgives. Somebody say he forgave him. As the book said, give and it shall be given unto you. And so by the time he gets to Esau, he doesn't know what to expect. He doesn't know how his brother's going to respond. One thing he knows is he has seed in the ground. And by the time he sees Esau, Esau has 400 men with him. Jacob don't know what's about to happen. His brother runs to him. And he falls on his neck. And he kisses him. And they weep together. Two different types of tears. The tears of the one who is forgiven and the tears of the one who forgave. Amen. That doesn't happen if Jacob doesn't already have seed in the ground. While I'm grateful for the fruit, I'm going to be real. My fruit got a high seed. I know, I know. You said, but it's easier, Pastor Nate, to get it down when it ain't got no seed. I can't reproduce nothing without a seed. In order to make more, I've got to have a seed. And what you'll realize when you sow is that there's power in your code. Come on, I'm done. Jump up on your feet. Give God a hand on the building. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place, for this worship experience. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sins, now is your time. Now is your moment. If that's you, I want you to throw your hand up high in the air right now. I don't want you to wait about it, don't think about it, don't pump your brakes. If you don't know Jesus and you want to know him, throw your hand up as high as you can right now. If you're watching online, hashtag that's me. We want to welcome you. We want to welcome you home. Hallelujah. If you're here on today and you're looking for a place to call home, if God told you this is the place for you, don't soul roll it no more. Don't pump your brakes no more. You know what you felt. You know what God said. If that's you with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you need a place to call home, and God told you this is that place, throw your hand up in the air right now. We want to welcome you home. Hallelujah, God. We thank you. God, we bless you. God, we adore you. Hallelujah, God. We give you glory. And God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise in the building. Hallelujah. Listen, we love you. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Thank you so much for your presence in the building. This is our first installment of the fruit of forgiveness. How many were blessed today by what God spoke to you? If you are blessed, I want to encourage you to go and share with someone else. Tell them, listen, we're doing this series. This series is about forgiveness. This series is being able to walk in the fullness of who God called for you to be. And I don't want to be the only person blessed by it. Won't you come with me so we can be blessed together? Amen. Amen. Listen, we love you. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Let's pray. Father, we give you glory for this worship experience. We thank you for your presence in this place. God, we thank you for your hand over our lives. Even in time when we messed up, we had mistakes or even intentionals, God. We give you glory that your hand was ever present. And we pray, God, now that as we continue to move forward in reconciliation, God, being able to apologize for our wrongs and walk in forgiveness as we also are forgiven. That you would help us to not only, God, have fruit, but to have seed. We want to put seed in the ground. 
We want to be able to forgive others. We want to be able to love one another, to demonstrate compassion toward others. So, Father, grant us the grace to do so. As we depart from this place, but never from your presence, allow no evil to befall us. Neither let any plague come at our tent. Thank you, great God, that you are, for giving our angels charge over us and keep us in all of our ways. In the name of Jesus the Christ, that we pray this in God, our Father, through the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you in advance. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. We love you. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Listen, uh, we we will not be having Bible study this week. We won't be having Bible study this week. I know typically we're off for the whole summer. Uh, we're still kind of trying to uh, look into that and see what God's saying. But this week we're off. So enjoy your time off. Enjoy your time with your family. And we'll get back with you soon. God bless you. We love you. Heaven smile upon you.